It's your review. No one cares. They don't care. Oh my God. Hey everyone, it's me, author Alexandria Infante, coming to you with another review. It's Sunday and it's bright out there as you guys can see the sun. It looks like a really nice day. I haven't gone out yet. Um, it's still, it's not that early, but it's still only like 12 o'clock, I think. Anyway, so as you can see, she didn't want to come on the video. Um, I'm not sure what it is about that, but we'll discuss it at a later point but today we are reviewing spell oops sorry <laughs> just a second because it's not my review okay so i actually had i actually couldn't um review the book it's called spellbound and hellhounds and it's by author Nia Rose. She's an indie author and she actually runs a publishing company as well. Um, I didn't read the book because, um, you know, sometimes I get like swamped on a Saturdays where as work is concerned. So Jen read the book and she's going, this is basically, I'm going to read her review because as you could see, that's why I don't understand you. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to read it um, and then basically tell you what her review is. So normally I really don't read YA. I mean, I've, I've liked some YAs. Like, I mean, I love Harry Potter. Um, I read YA to my kids, but um, I'm one of those people that once my kids got grown and YA was out of the house, I didn't really read them. Um, now, I mean, come on, everybody read Harry Potter, or at least nearly everyone read Harry Potter. Um, but I'm not really a YA fan. I mean, I loved SK's book. I did read that one. Um, but hers was more of an NYA, so it wasn't really... Because the character, although she's in high school, she's uh, she already turned 18. So she's looking at adulthood. And then I think this, the second book actually takes place when the character is 21. So I do like YA like that. Um, but I didn't actually have the time to read um, Nia Rose's book because I actually had to... I was called in again to work yesterday. So Jen read it because we don't want to say that we're going to review someone's book and then we don't. Um, I do have some qualifications though that I will talk about after the review is done because um, I'm we're really truly loving the book's uh, submissions but um, there are a few issues with them so once the review is over I will talk about that. Okay so now as I said the book is called um, let me show you. <laughs> it's called Spellbound and Hellhounds. And this is the cover. This is the cover right here. So you, I hope you guys can see it. And it's by author Nia Rose. You can see. So now, um, Jen. Okay, so she said she's not going to rate the book. She's not going to rate it because um, she found um, some issues with it. And although um, she did, she doesn't want to throw people off from the book. Um, yeah, my contacts are in the mail because my glasses are going to take five actual days. So you guys have to deal with me and my broken ones. Get over it! <laughs> so anyway. So, as I was saying, um, so basically you have the main characters, Vanessa and Bobo, or um, Bobalarian, I think she's, I think that's how she said it is, is that what she said? Um, and then Leon, okay, so the book, um, she just, okay, so first off the story is, um, Vanessa is a student at an academy. Um, she was an orphan. And um, basically, the magical council or um, what have you picked her. Uh, she had magical properties. And so, um, basically, the uh, 
the magical council took her in. Now, a lot of parents, um, if their kid had magic and they didn't feel like they wanted to deal with it, then they could give their kid to an orphanage. And so basically, um, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then basically they would, uh, the magical council would take the child and then basically if they had magic, they would train them up. So she's at an academy um, for magic and she, um, the book opens with her and her, uh, I guess maybe sort of be called like a demon spawn, not so much a demon spawn, but I guess your pet, your demon pet and her demon pet is a demonic ogre. And basically, he's intelligent because he was smashed. He was slapped with two intelligent spells. And so, instead of being um, like, I guess, the normal grunting whatever, he actually is intelligent. So, he can have, you know, intelligent conversations with her. He dresses like a human. Um, but he's just like uh, six feet eight or something like that. And so, um, it opens with them walking through the snow and um, it gives a description of him and her and then um, so basically um, she has she wants to be part of this council and in order to be part of the council she has to find and contain um, seven I mean 24 either dark magic witches or dark magic demons and then once she gets to her 24th she will become a part of this um, a part of this council or the school academy or whatever and so um so that's pretty much what she's doing she's hunting so so i'm taking like it's it's something like uh, uh a witch hunter or something like that i'm not uh, is, would that be like right <laughs> yeah so um okay so and then um basically so what Jen says is that, um, okay, she felt like um, the book read very slowly. Like, um, okay, and she says what she means when she says slowly. Why I got to say this? <laughs> oh, my God. What she, what she means is basically, um, she said it, it read kind of boring. Like, um, like there was no bang. Um, the character was a bit bland. Um, the banter between, uh, the character and her pet, Vanessa and her, her, uh, spawn or her pet, um, Bobo, um, was stale. Um, she felt like the world was a bit stagnant. Like, really, I have to read that. Um. It's supposed to be, okay, and then she says, it's supposed to be a school, but there were no school characters. Like, in the school, you didn't see uh, other students. Like, when we did, um, she says, like, when we did, um, you guys see my color. <laughs> this is the only thing we can find right now. Anyway, um, and so, basically, like, when we did uh, SK Blue, um, SK Blues took place at a school, and um, then the ramifications of, you know, what happens with her and her friends and all that kind of stuff. And no, and no, a YA, I kind of feel like on like not her, but I kind of feel like a YA doesn't necessarily have to ha have a school and stuff like that. But if you're going to bill it as a YA, it just kind of seems like the character needed to have some uh, adult friends. Um, you can speak on the camera. They don't care. But um, anyway, um, um, she she feels like the character should have had like some um, adult friends, and I feel that way too. Because like, if I'm going to read a YA, I mean, like Harry Potter, he had a slew of friends. Even though the character was a, I mean, the book itself was about Harry. There were a bunch of other friends that were there too. And then what was the other book that I read? I read another book. It was a YA. Um, it was one of the ones that my my daughter was reading. I can't remember what the name of it was. But anyway, the, the character had a bunch of friends. I'm like, okay, so even Argon, Argon, 
he does start out by himself because his family is basically killed. But at some point, he picks up other friends, and they're not just adults. And so far, what she's saying is in this book, all of the, the character's friends were adults. So that made it, like, a little weird. And then um, she said um, the character, she felt like the characters were flat. Um, and she wrote again here, where is the school? Um, she couldn't find the excitement. The book just read and nothing more. Um, the plot was a bit askew. Um, where were the other students? She wrote that again. <laughs> because um, this, the story takes place at an academy. Uh, I guess this is why she's not going to star this book t today. Um, this, she said the school, the, 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 the plot, I mean, the book takes place at an academy. It tells you that it's a magical academy. And if it's a YA, she feels like, where are the other students? Through the entire book, there were no other students. Like, she goes before the council, her and Leon, which is the other character, but there were no students involved. Um... And then she said she felt like the character whined too much. Um, and then she felt like the author used too many... What is this? Too many, too many large words. Um, the book she felt wasn't written for teens or YA. Um, because there were no children. Um, it's a YA, but there are no actual students at the academy... She was confused and just lost most of the time. She felt the author needed more work. Um, she said that sometimes you have to read uh, books in your genre by famous authors to be able to write YA. There's, okay, this book wasn't YA. It could be, it could maybe be classified as NYA. Um, and then, um, she was just missing like the circle of friends, the other interactions with even not so much just not so much adults, but other young people since it's a YA. Um, and then. Uh, let's see. OK, she said she tried. She just felt. She just wasn't feeling it. And to be honest, the book. Was a bit boring. Okay, so, um, so basically, so she's not going to star it. Um, she feels like, as, as I read, she feels like the author needs a little bit more work, um, in the book, like developing from what I'm getting from develop, she needs to develop the world more and maybe throw in some other characters besides just Vanessa and Bobo, um, and the Leon guy. Um, and the council, I mean, it's nice to have a council, but like maybe throw in some other characters. Cause like in SK's book, there is a council. Um, she has to go before the council, but it's like, I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm wrong. I have to read some more. Cause like when we did, um, when we did, uh, KRS, KRS is KRS McIntyre's, uh, Saving Eden, even there, it's like, it, that was a post-apocalyptic um, YA, right? But she still had this, even though this character grew up by herself, she didn't know anything in the world except for her father. That's all she knew. But even still, she met a boy. She met a boy, and then a, that boy took her to other young people. If it's... It's like, if it's a YA, why are there no young people in this book? So, I don't know. This is what she's telling me. And she just felt like it was really weird. And so, I mean, I would kind of see that as weird too, to be honest. If I'm reading a book, a YA book, and there are no kids in it, or there's just one. You know, I don't know what, what this genre would actually be. Like, I'm assuming it's paranormal because it's, witch, it's witchcraft, it's... You know, I write adult, so I don't really read YA unless it's like something like one of my kids read and then they are like, oh, mom, this book was so good. Um, it's sort of in your field. Why don't you read it? You know, other than that, 
I really don't know. And so Jen is like the YA, um, she's like the YA connoisseur. She only reads paranormal and horror. Like every now and again, she'll read one of my like historical romances. She's never read any of my contemporaries. She's, that's just not her cup of, um, but she will read like a historical romance. And I think it's more along the fact because she's Hawaiian, um, she's Hawaiian, Dominican and black. So she likes that, you know, cultural aspect there. So I think that's probably the only reason why she reads my historicals, but she doesn't read anything else of mine. You know, she's, I think she's read one or two of R. Lee's books, but yeah, she only reads my paranormal. That's it. And so she is a serious paranormal buff and she loves YA and that is like her genre, her, her niche, her, her, that's why she wanted to do the YA. So, um, not saying that she can't be wrong, that someone else could totally, totally love this book, which is why I is why you're not starring it, right? It, yeah, it's why she's not going to star it because she wants other people to pick it up as well to see, you know, because maybe her opinion's wrong. You know, it's just what she felt. And so as, you know, a reader, she felt like the book was a bit boring and that it didn't, there was no bang, there was no action. It didn't flow, you know, at a hurried pace. It was very slow. And so in the fact that she needed, she felt like she needed more, more characters, right? Um, more actual characters or young people in the book, because from what she's saying, there wasn't, there was like the main girl, the, uh, the, the fact that they're chasing these or these hellhounds come through a portal, right? These, these hair, how hound, hounds come through a portal and basically, um, having no one else in the book, but those four characters in the council, she feels like it, it made it kind of boring. So, um, she would like for the author to develop the world more, right? Um, stick in some, stick in more children or more kids or more youth or teenagers or whatever, because it is a YA and it's weird to have a YA with only one kid, but I don't read the genre. So I don't know. Maybe that's like a normal thing as far as Stop looking at my glasses. I'm getting my contacts tomorrow. Um, but for, you know, maybe that's a, a normal thing for a for one kid to lead a YA book like that, just by themselves. I just, it just seems like maybe not to me, but then, like I said, I don't read the genre agendas. And so if this is what she's saying, I'm, you know, I'm trusting that that's true. So anyway, but once again, the book is called Spellbounds. Ah, just a second. Sorry. Yeah. Spellbound and Hellhounds. Spellbound and Hellhounds. And it's by author Neo Rose. And um, I believe you can find it at Amazon. Um, I think, or was, was that what she said? Um, I think it's that this is a redo maybe was this the one okay anyway i think you could find this book at because if you just came on the camera and you could have told all this stuff yourself anyway um i believe the book is at amazon.com um you can find it there uh i don't know what the actual price was but it's built as a ya so um there uh there's no profanity in it. There's there because it is in the YA. She just felt like it wasn't YA enough. Like there were no like, you know, kids in it or there are no teenagers or so she feels like the author needs to like develop the world more and actually, you know, make some, uh, some kids. Yeah. So, uh, once again, that's Spellbound and Hellhounds, author Nero's. So now I have some things to talk about. Um, I made a little note for myself too. Okay, so these submissions are going awesome. And we really, really thank you guys for them. And we thank you for the subscribers. You guys see that? We're up to 120 now. Yay! Keep subscribing. 
keep clicking that button and keep ringing that little bell. Okay, so about the submissions though. Um, so a couple of things. One, when you're submitting your book, um, please place it in manuscript form. Okay, because we've gotten some uh, actual, uh, we've gotten some actual like PDFs. And a PDF is pretty much obsolete now. Um, there is a program, it is called Calibri. It is so awesome. Um, when I upload to, or when many, many, my editor uploads to, uh, to Barnes and Nobles, Barnes and Noble has a nook. So you have to have an e-published book in order to, uh, to, um, upload to the nook. Now you can, you know, my books are in, uh, print form on Barnes and Noble as well, but in order to convert that to a, you know, what the nook book requires, you have to put that book in, in, in a nook form. Well, Calibri, it is so cool. It's free to download. Um, there is a version for a 32-bit if you have an older computer, a 64-bit if you have a newer computer. And it will go to both. It will go on both computers. And what it does is it takes a PDF from a PDF or even a Word document. It takes a Word document or a PDF from that to an EPUB. Which, bit, which is what basically Jenny has been doing with the submissions. Um, the problem is, is that only you can know how your book is supposed to go. So we're getting like, um, we'll get like the table of contents. And like, if your book hasn't been uh, blank spaced, if it hasn't been um, page break, if it hasn't been page ending, then the book just comes out as one huge jumbled thing. And so we're having a hard time reading that. So these are kind of the things that you have to do yourself. Um, I will post a video on what it is exactly that you need to do if you are a new author and you don't know yet. Because I know it's hard. When Nine years ago when I came out, my publishing company did it for me. And then, but they, they didn't show me how to do it because they were my company. That was their job, the editors and all that stuff. So when I finally left them in 2013, I had no clue how to do that stuff myself. So we're noticing that we're getting a lot of books that are just in PDF and manuscript form. I mean, PDF and uh, um, just a Word document. Well, that's not manuscript form, so it makes it hard for the Kindle or the Nook to read it. And so what Jen basically has to do, she has to transfer that into a Nook or a, a uh, Mobi file when it would be better for you to do it because it's your book and you know how you want the book to go, how you want to look. Like some, some people are sending us covers and then the um, actual uh, um, PDF. Well, there's, we're, we're like, we're into to 2020. As far as authors and indie authors are concerned, there are so many programs out there for us to use. And, and in that video over there that I'm going to set up, like after I do this one, I'm going to tell you all of the things that you need to do as an indie author to make your books look amazing. I mean, you can go over, you can go over to my channel. My channel is uh, Alexandria Infante, um, MC Latina uh MC Latina author Alexandria Infante, or just type in Alexandria Infante and it'll come up for you. Um, I had to learn that stuff too, because like my books, we actually put, we've actually put images in them. We put uh, like slang, we put all these kind of stuff because I write a series that's, um, I write six paranormal series, which I'm sure I've told you guys, but in those paranormal series, we deal with myths from like, they're all centered around the Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian mythology. So we put Egyptian mythology, but then the, the din of werewolves, they're all Scottish. So basically we add the Scottish language to the books. Um, we add the British slang because they take half of the books take care, take place over in England. 
and the other half take take place over here in America. And then you have the Bayou Blue series, which which takes place in Louisiana. So we got to throw in some some Cajun, you know, Poppy and you know, uh, that no Tati out there, baby. <laughs> you know, basically we have to throw in that Cajun too. So it takes a lot of time and editing for our books. But the pro the thing is, is that if you don't have an editor, there are editing programs, there's software and all kind of stuff that you can use to help you out. Because um, in the actual synopsis and uh, um, manuscripts that are being sent so far, only of the ones that have been sent to us, um, only four of them were were technically done right um and these are authors that have been in the game for a while like um you know author john wright her book was like pristine um who else uh uh kenya wright uh siren allen those are all indie indie MC and RI authors that I know and I like have interactions with on Facebook and all that stuff too. And they're awesome writers. And so, and not saying that you guys aren't awesome writers, writers, it's just that they've been in the game longer than you have. So they know they come correct. Their, their manuscripts, their books, they're laid out like perfectly. They're laid out perfectly because they already know that because we've had, we've had uh, readers be like, what the, is this this is not something that you sell you can't be you know basically doing that so you know after nine years it comes like this to us so i will upload another video which basically tells you everything that you need to do when submitting a manuscript or when submitting your uh your book for submission because the ones that aren't formatted they're hard, they're getting like hard for us to read and so basically it's causing Jin to do even more work because she's reading the book but then she has to stop and then go and put it into an actual form of a book that we can read to put on the Kindle or whatever because as they're coming now we would only be able to read that on the computer and we all have busy lives so that's like not a possibility to us whereas a Kindle or Moby you could just we could just stick it on the phone and go tablet whatever so I will post that other video and please watch it because it will be submission requirements. If we don't get the book in these requirements, then we're not going to accept it. Because it's just, unfortunately, and I don't mean to say this to be mean or whatever, it's just too much work for us. We don't we don't have the time for that. So if we give you the tools, then you can do it yourself. And then when you submit, just do it that way. And so, once again, the book is called... Let me get it for you. Because we actually... It's Jen, you had to put this one in... Uh, in the form right um yeah so basically uh it's called spellbound and hellhounds coven chronicles book one so this is one of the things that happens with books in the first series i mean the first book in the series sometimes unfortunately they may fall flat but then the second book might be like complete fire so we, this is why we don't star them because we're not about to discourage anyone from reading her trilogy or series or whatever, because even though Jen didn't, Jen felt like the first book could have been better. The second one might be amazing. And I feel like when you're a first time author, the first book, um, for, fortunately for me, um, when I put out my first book, um, teaching between midnight and dawn, uh, basically it's, you know, hyphen TB Ariana's legend, um, which is the actual title for the book. It's Ariana's letter. It's CG between midnight and dawn abbreviated. And then Ariana's legend. Fortunately for me, when I put out my first book readers, um, tons of readers thought it was amazing. Um, I would get the emails, all that kind of stuff. So it's hard to do that, to put out the first book and just be, be on point. Um, when I put out the first book for um, Midnight Fairy with the uh, Light Fairy Tale, Midnight Fairy Tale, same thing. It was on point. People loved it. 
But when I got Bayou Blues, when I got to Bayou Blues, because Bayou Blues is a crossover series, some readers weren't happy. And it was the first book in the Bayou Blue series. So, I mean, I even got a reader who gave me a two star because she was like, what that is going on? It's like this book is, um, it's a crossover. And the author didn't tell you that, which technically I did. She just wasn't paying attention. But um, this is why you have to read the author's notes, people. They tell you that. So, but anyway, she gave it a two star because she was confused. And sort of to her own making, but because she didn't read the author notes. But the whole point is that she was confused. And my point in that is sometimes the first the first book doesn't slap, you know. Now that same reader, which I didn't even understand why she read the second book, but the whole point is she did. The second book, she gave a four stars because she was like, oh my God, this book was amazing because I understand the characters more. So that's what I'm saying. This is why I'm not going to, I mean, this is why Jen is not going to star her book because of the fact that the second book might be amazing. You know, the first one is the hardest hurdle to get over. It's your first book. You're an indie author. You're excited and you just want to write, you know. But there are some things that come with that too. So basically, I will put the other video over there because I, I don't want to take up her review time. Um, I'll put the other video out uh, in a little while and basically give you some pointers on basically uh, when you submit your work to us. And that's pretty much it. Once again, the book is called Spellbound and Hellhounds and it's by author Nia Rose. Pick it up anyway, because Jen's opinion is her opinion. You know, I mean, this book might actually slap to you, as my son would say. I, that's my new word, guys. I'm going to be saying slap all the time. So this book might actually work for you. So pick it up, check it out. You know, our goal here is not to encourage people. I mean, not to discourage people from reading a book. It is to encourage you that we want to show indie authors love. So. Just because Jen didn't, didn't feel like it hit the spot for her, it might for you. So pick it up, go out there to Amazon or go online, check it out, read it yourself because you might be actually enamored and love the book. And once again, it's called Spellbound and Hellhounds and it's by author Nia Rose. And that's pretty much it for today. Tomorrow we will be reading... And my camera's coming, guys. It really is. I mean, you can see me, though, right? You can see me. You see me all the time. Should I put more light in like this? Because you actually really get to see my face better, right? Then. But then again, it's daytime, too. And I have, like, these big, this big, huge Disney window in my... Uh, in this part of my house and so um basically i know every time i open it up it's like i want to either sing uh um pocahontas or uh um the sound of music you know i open the windows and i just want to be like the hills are alive with the sound of music <laughs> anyway <laughs> so basically yeah um so tomorrow's author is going to be April Thomas. That is the book that we are going to review tomorrow. And the book is called Endurance, The Power Within. And now um, I can't really, I'm not sure if you can see this because the picture is a little bit small. For some reason it came out like that. This is another, this is another one of the books that um, Jen actually had to, uh, make into an ebook so please guys watch the video before you submit your books um i will title it before you submit your books to us so please watch it because it's going to give you some pointers and i'm going to show you some stuff that you can do in order to make your book ebook form or kindle form because we're having a really hard time trying to read them and it's basically making more work and I don't want your book to just get thrown to because I don't pick the books to read um I just put them out <laughs> I just do the reviews right now um Erica 
she's decided not to come on the channel like she would like for me to read her reviews too which i'm not even sure i'm gonna do because i i think that just whatever it feels dumb to them i'm sure anyway um so i'm not sure that i will be doing that uh because it just i might just read them myself i'm not sure i'll figure out what i'm gonna do in the next couple of days but uh, i mean if you guys don't don't mind the reviews being read like from jenny or erica because erica erica i can understand jenny i can't erica i can understand because erica is a lawyer and you know if she comes on the channel and she's just like and then it was like blah 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 you know she might walk into the courtroom and the judge would be like mm -hmm, so you got a youtube channel huh <laughs> you know that might not work out well for her so basically what we're going i'll pretty much figure out what i'm going to do with that at some point but um for now i want you guys to really watch that video that i'm gonna put up because um it will give you the guidelines on how to submit um we thank you guys so much for submitting your books regardless you know um that is one of the reasons why we don't want to star them if the book has technical issues because we don't want people not reading your book the whole point is for people to read your book and to buy your book and to recognize you as an author something that you've basically sweat blood and tears for you know and so um like i clicked on to um uh read with sandy oh my gosh she is hysterically funny you guys should check out her channel she does book reviews too and um she didn't know what an indie author was guys this is um and she said she'd never read an indie author um well no not that she didn't know what an indie author was she said she's never read an indie author so the vast majority of people out there they have not heard of us or they have not read our work and so this is why we started this channel i mean i saw another i saw a couple of indie author review channels out there but they were just randomly picking books and talking about them and like the channel wasn't for indie review only it was just the 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 reviewer thought she'd throw in some indie books that day well this channel is for review to review indie authors only we don't review anyone else on this channel, just indie authors. It's for you to make yourself known and for other people to know you. So please continue to send in those submissions and watch that submission video. And we thank you so much for subscribing and we will see you tomorrow. Bye, my lovelies.